city is dominated by the distinctive CN Tower, currently the third tallest tower in the world at 1,815 feet. There are many pictures online of the Toronto skyline viewed from Niagara-on-the-Lake, New York, 30 miles away. With the Metabunk calculation, we see that 486 feet of the tower, or about 26% of it, should be hidden behind the curve of the Earth from that distance. And this is exactly what we see, as you can easily tell when compared to an image of the full tower at the same scale. Flat Earthers sometimes show cities in the distance that, according to them, should be below the horizon but are clearly visible and claim this proves the flat earth. To show the effect, you have to show a boat partially obscured by the horizon, like this. That all perfectly fit the heliocentric globe model when you understand it, as I will explain in future. At a viewing height of 6 feet, we calculate that 2,166 feet should be below the horizon at 60 miles. So they are right that the entire city of Chicago should be completely hidden. And it is hidden nearly all the time, but sometimes it can be seen from that far away due to a type of atmospheric light refraction phenomenon called a superior mirage. A superior mirage is caused by colder air below warmer air, which bends the light around the curve of the Earth. This event sometimes makes the news for the very reason that it is a rare occurrence until I found this photo from Grand Mere State Park. This is from Joshua Nowicki. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake that we're actually seeing a mirage of the Chicago skyline. You can tell that it's a mirage because there is lots of distortion. The Willis Tower on the left is clearly elongated. And also, there are videos of this same view that show the buildings dancing around, changing shape, and even disappearing. Even though this is a mirage, the bottom parts of the buildings are clearly still obscured from view, just as we expect. If the Earth was flat, you could see the buildings on any clear day, not just rarely when the conditions are right for refraction. Flat earthers use these rare events to try to prove the earth is flat, but that makes no sense. It's called cherry picking, a favorite trick of all types of science deniers. You don't get to pick the anomalies that seem to agree with your views and ignore the common observations that don't, and still call yourself an honest investigator. That is intellectually dishonest.